Do you feel that you're not using your expensive digital camera to its full potential? That's very common. In fact, most beginner photographers only use their digital camera for photos they could easily capture with their own smartphone camera. But it doesn't have to be that way. My name is Mark Hemmings, and I'm an internationally recognized photographer and photography instructor. And in this video, I'll share with you three advanced techniques for stunning photos that you could only take with your digital camera. These techniques will be the stepping stones to take your photography to the next level. Okay, take a look at these really cool shots on this energetic, color-filled street. Look at all the color, look at all the movement. In the background, we have good, sharp buildings. And as you can see, the people are blurry. Now, this is really good. The professionals call this motion blur, and it provides a sense of movement, some dynamic energy, which really helps your photos. But the problem is it's really hard to get this type of scene in the daytime. The reason being is that in the daytime, your camera is going to provide a very fast shutter speed. What that means is that the people will be sharp and the building will be sharp as well. Well, how do you get around that? Well, you use a slower shutter speed. Now, to get a slower shutter speed in the daytime, it's tricky. You need to have really expensive filters and it's not that easy. However, I have a few techniques for you, some secrets from the pros that will help you get the exact same look for your photos so you can get motion blur as well. Now, the first thing I'd like you to do is go to Aperture Priority, and that's AV, or some cameras, it's just the letter A. Next, the reason why I want you to choose a low ISO is because I want to have a slower shutter speed and ISO is related to a slow shutter speed. Also, please choose the highest f-stop number possible. Now some lenses that would be f-22, other lenses would be f-32. Whatever the highest f-stop number is, please turn your lens to that as well. Now, as you can see, we're in the shade right now. That's great because that will actually slow your shutter speed down even more. Finally, a tripod is essential. The reason why we love tripods is because it will keep the background sharp and the people will have that nice flowing movement. If you don't use a tripod, you may actually have a little bit of a camera shake because the shutter speed is so slow. Okay, now let's take some pictures and let's get some really cool motion blur photographs. Okay, so I got the shot, I absolutely love it. Now as you can see, the background's nice and sharp, and the people moving by have that motion blur that really add an amazing sense of movement and dynamic action. Having your subject sharp, but the background blurred is one of the coolest photography effects. You can capture a moving car or a cyclist that's fairly sharp, but with motion blur all around. The best way to achieve this result is to use a technique called panning. This is when we track our subject with the camera as it is passing us by. This way, the subject will remain in focus while the rest of the background will become blurry because of the camera movement. Okay, I'd like to give you an example of just how we do this. Now, I'm gonna wait for a really interesting looking car or uh, someone on a motorcycle to go by me and I'm going to pan my camera to track the subject and let's see what happens. Okay, so I had a really great surprise. I got two people walking up the street, one with a huge collection of balloons. Now, as you can see, the background is blurry, but the people are actually sharp because they're moving pretty quickly. This is really great. Now, one little thing, I wanna give you a technical note, is that when you're doing this type of photography, it's always best to photograph at around dusk or just before the sun sets because we want low light. Low light usually means a slower shutter, which means that you can actually get this panning effect. It's really effective. Also, you may need to go to manual focus. Not always, but if you have a hard time focusing when you're doing this effect, switch to manual focus and you should be absolutely fine. Now, about camera modes. I personally like to use aperture priority because I'm used to it and I feel I have a lot of control. However, for this type of scene, shutter priority works really well as well because you can actually control how much blur there is in the background when you're doing the panning shot. 
For more blurry background, you would actually go to f11 if you're at f8 because that will provide a slower shutter speed. However, if you feel it's way too blurry and it doesn't look good, you could actually go to f5.6, which would actually give you a slightly faster shutter speed, which would actually control how much background blur you have. I would like to share with you an amazing technique for taking really cool pictures at night or at dusk when it's getting pretty dark out. It's called light trails, and it's a result of having a long exposure. Now what we're going to do is make use of the light coming from the headlights of cars, of trucks, and uh, motorcycles going under this bridge. It's going to be a really cool effect because what's going to happen is the camera is going to have a very long shutter speed which makes the light very blurry. Now we won't see the vehicles because of the long exposure but we will see the light. Let me show you first what we need to do in our camera. I'd like you to switch to aperture priority. Also, I'd like to make sure that you're at your lowest ISO possible. That would be ISO 100 or in some cameras, ISO 200. Also, I want to make sure that your aperture's f-stop is at the highest number possible. For example, maybe your lens is f22 for its highest or maybe f16 or even f32. Whatever the highest f-stop number is for your aperture, place it on that. Okay, the next thing, make sure you have a tripod. It's critical. This won't work without a tripod. You could possibly rest your camera on a solid surface. However, a tripod has a little bit more flexibility, so that's what I suggest. Now, when you're ready to take the picture, make sure you've composed it the way you wanted it and you're ready to go. Now, you don't need to worry about camera shake. You don't need to have a 10 second or three second timer because the picture's so long, even if you do shake the camera just a little bit, the exposure could be uh, as much as one or two minutes long. So be prepared for a long wait. Okay, let's do a test run. I see some cars coming down now, so I'm gonna take the picture. And now, I'm just going to wait. Okay, it was a great success. Take a look at this picture. We have really great exposure all around. The street is exposed perfectly. We have lovely light on the sides, but what we have are streaks of light. You can't see the cars, only the light. It's a great success. Just remember, you don't have to rely on headlights. I could go on the other side of this bridge and get the red tail lights, which could even be cooler. Don't forget, anything that is moving that has bright light, you can use this technique on it will radically enhance your photography. Have fun. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you got a lot of value out of it. Now there's so much more I'd like to tell you about digital photography. And while I didn't hold anything back, there's only so much I could share with you in a short video like this. And that's why I've recorded an entire video course about taking incredible photos with your digital camera and finally taking your camera off of the auto mode. So if you'd like to find out more about my digital photography course, you'll find more information right under this video. So take a look at my full digital photography course and I hope to see you there.